Welcome to the Vertical Go-To-Market Podcast, where you'll discover new opportunities to grow your business from seven figures to eight from the world's most successful agency and B2B SaaS executives. I'm your host, Corey Quinn. Let's jump into the show. Today, we're joined by Ronik Patel. Welcome, Ronik. Hey, Corey. I'm super excited for our conversation. To kick things off, could you please share a little bit about yourself and your background for those listeners who may not be familiar? Hey, everyone. I'm Ronik Patel. We run a white label productized agency called Unlimited WP. Uh, I'm sure we'll get into my background, which is in genetics. And from there, somehow I ended up running an agency now. That's awesome. Could you share a little bit more about what Unlimited WP does? Yes, Unlimited WP, as I said, it's a productized service and we help digital agencies with WordPress development. Well, that's what, what we do, but what we are really trying to do is help those agencies grow their profits, save time and scale their agency. And just for the listeners context, what could you share about the size of WP, maybe in the number of employees, number of clients or revenue, anything you're comfortable with sharing? Yes. Uh, in terms of size, we are 100 plus team member in-house now. We are in seven figures. 100% of our business is reoccurring. We have offices in Boston, which is really just two people there. And our entire rest of the team is in India which is our development team, project managers, QAs, and a bunch of other people assist and to make sure that our uh, expert WordPress developers can do what they need to do best. That's awesome. So two two in Boston and then 98 in, in India. Yes. Well, we are at 107 <laughs> right now and nine are, nine are joining next month. Okay. Exciting. So, you, so you're, you're growing and that's, that's beautiful. What is your role there as the founder of the business? Over the, the past few years, it has, a, there's many seeds that I'm leaving empty. I'm leaving it behind me. I'm mainly <laughs> on strategy right now. Strategic growth is what I would say 80% of what I do right now. And the rest 20% is everything else. Yeah. So we'll dig a little bit more into that in a second. But first, how old is the company? How, how long have you guys been around? Eight years. Eight years now. So Could we you... have rebranded... We rebranded about uh, three, four years ago, but like eight, okay. eight years in total. Yep. Cool. I want to I wanna understand the rebrand. I want to understand kind of the whole background that led you to a hundred plus person company, seven figures, productized service, targeting agencies is where you're at today. So how did Unlimited WP start? Oh, so this is like a, a pre-rebrand. Unlimited WP came into picture in uh, towards the end of 2000. 19. Up until that point, we were just a traditional agency that helped clients with different types of web projects from, you know, web application development to WordPress websites, e-commerce websites. We were one of those guys where you can, if you ask us anything nicely, we will do it. Even if we didn't knew, uh, we'll put all the time and energy to learn those things and we'll do it. And, you know, I'm sure your listeners are familiar that, you know, at after some point you realize that it's really good as a hobby, not as a business, because you're not really scaling. You're stuck, you're frustrated, you're spending way more time in your business than in your personal life. So really from all the angles, you're trying to escape that somehow. And we were at that position. And this is, I'm talking about this is 2018, the topic of niching, finding your niche, and then working in there, becoming expert authority in that I mean, that, that's that been a sort of evergreen, even now people talk about it. But for me, yeah. uh, it, it you know, once you realize that you need to do something, you start seeing that everywhere around you. And that's what I was seeing. And we finally niched down into this uh, digital marketing space. Even within technologically speaking, we also niched down and we said we'll only do WordPress. We sort of half asked it. Uh, where, you know, we kept our original website, we added a page and we said, oh, well, we do this, but we kept uh, everything else too. So the homepage was the same, but there was just this one page saying that, oh, well, we do this, right? And that didn't really take off, but we did got those agency clients and we started learning how we can serve them better. What are the, their pain points? And, you know, all of that led eventually into then rebranding into Unlimited WP. Yeah. So in a way, from a high level, it sounds like you specialized in two ways. The first one being who you served, which eventually was digital marketing agencies, uh, number one. And then number two, the other way you specialized in what you do. So instead of being sort of a, an agency that will do you know, generic, quote unquote, internet marketing, websites, PPC, SEO, you decided to focus in on a specific service, which is 
WordPress website, it sounds like. Yes, exactly. That, that's right. So take, take me back to, I guess, 2018. What was happening in the business that led you to believe that, hey, I needed to, we needed to focus. It sounds like that you focused on agencies first and then you went down the productized service route. Is that sort of the sequence of things? Yes, yes, that's correct. Going back to that 2018 to answer you, it's yeah. from, you could say from none of the perspective it was working, right? Like let's say marketing. That wasn't working because when you are that generalized, it, it's hard. Like, you know, what are your marketing channels? And not only that, it wasn't working. Also, after getting productized, we learned so many things that we didn't know back then. So also mm. that was another disadvantage. For example, marketing wasn't working. If the marketing doesn't work, the sales typically doesn't work either, right? Uh, fi financing or just working with those clients, getting the team to train on something, right? Because one project you're doing, which is on Magento, and then the next you're doing on WordPress, you can't be expert at all those things. So you're just doing research and just learning, learning uh, every day nonstop. And that, that's not a recipe to scale, right? If you want to scale, then you're doing a handful of things that you know how to do it. And you're continuously, you know, delivering those same things over and over and over again. So you have proper systems and processes in place to deliver that. And that's when you, you know, you become profitable and you start growing. So none of those things were basically working back in 2018. When you say your marketing wasn't working, what does that mean? I would say it wasn't working in the sense where we didn't have a direction that, you know, we would try Facebook ads for two months and then we'll try Google ads. And then we hear, you hear somewhere, oh, you should have a lead magnet. Then we're, okay, yeah, well, let's build a lead magnet, right? And then you try that for six months. And then you go, well, this uh, takes awfully long to build up your email list. And uh, somebody tells you you need to have tens of thousands of emails, right? Then you could really do email marketing. And then you try, you know, so it's just basically trying different things. Uh, and, you know, you get leads here and there. Uh, again, not a recipe to scale a business. Mm -hmm. So you're in that moment. And what led you to decide on agencies as a primary focus for your product? So now that was mainly just how we were structured, where the team is in India. I was born in India, but I've been in States for about past 17 years. But team was in India. And uh, there is that uh, time zone difference. In order for me, you know, at that point, to communicate with all the clients and then getting all the work over to offshore, the team actually gets all the work. There is a limit how many people or clients or projects I can deal with, right? So we accidentally, probably in 2016, we had an agency client. And then, mm. you know, I realized that I could have, we could be working on 10 projects, but I'm only dealing with one person, which is the agency. Mm -hmm. And that, that really helps with the model where we can scale without having the front facing staff that we need on the state side. That just seemed attractive to me that, okay, this could be a good recipe to grow. And we are not talking about that today, but the whole reason I started this business was that I wanted that flexibility uh, where I can live in States, I can live in India, my entire family, friends, they're all in States in a way. But for whatever reason, I did want to go uh, come back to India. And by the way, I'm in India right now. I'm returning yeah. back next month. And, uh, you know, I wanted that roots back in India. And that that's where I'm like, okay, agencies, from that perspective, it made sense and nothing else. So in other words, you would have Instead of having one project per one client, you'd have one client with multiple projects, kind of simplify the customer relationship and also streamline things a bit. Is that fair? Yes, yes, exactly. And so you had that one agency client and you saw, oh, there's some scale here, the potential for scale here. How did you build momentum with other agencies? Like, how did you get the next agency and how did you grow that focus of your business on agencies? Just word of mouth, you know, and trying to really hunt those agencies. It it wasn't growing at the speed it, it's growing right now. Uh, I think we probably got to the point where we had 10 to 15 agency partners because we did niche mm. down, right? And it took us probably a year to get there. And that's when we started seeing that, well, we can't even handle this many agencies because the, the work, there is no predictability in how much work you'll get when. So we don't know how much devs we should hire before we enroll agency partners to work with it. Because even though they're agencies and, you know, one agency could represent 50 clients, but we don't know how much of that work we are actually getting it, right? So as we were getting those agencies, it was still, there's no predictability into how much work we will get. So again, that that's the same problem with the scale is if you don't know that, then we could keep adding the partners and that really 
means nothing because there's no reoccurring revenue coming from it. It's just the hope that, yes, they could bring a lot of work to us, but with no guarantee on when that could happen. How did you manage that? Like, what did that, how did that play out from sort of that first agency client to having a handful of clients? How did that end up working out with regard to the, the amount of work per agency? It, it was great. I mean, you know, having, having more partners, I mean, we definitely had more work than before, but it's almost like it was seasonal thing, right? You could have mm. certain months when they all needed our help. And then there were certain months when they didn't need it our help. And I think there was, it was a couple of instances when I got overexcited that, oh, well, there's a lot of work, let's hire. And back then, I think we had like nine people uh, to put that into perspective. So we were like, okay, l l let's hire. And then we hired and uh, those same partners then didn't have a work, right? And then we were like, okay, well, that's going to eat up on the, the all the profits from the previous month. And then again, we got to work and, you know, you're sort of trying to catch this pattern before like exactly, you know, oh, let's hire now because there, there will be work. And there were a couple of instances when we were both wrong, like both times we thought it would happen, it didn't happen. And the times yeah. when we thought it wouldn't happen, there were a lot more work than we could handle it, right? And I think those were the pain points that ultimately led into uh, getting into a product based service. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it was, it, it was like that, that we would have partners, but still how much of work we get out of it, there's no certainty on it. And so at, before you productized, you were doing basically any type of WordPress related development for an agency. Was that generally the relationship or was it more defined than that? Yes, we were doing anything WordPress and also just like we still have our, the, the original agency where we still had direct ah, clients okay. we worked with. That was All probably 80% right. of the business. Sorry, I should have said that. That was still yeah. the 80% of the business. Uh, the, the after working base. on that, it was just 20%, yes. So, so just to feed that back, so 80% of the revenue at this time, 80% of the revenue was sort of outsourced digital marketing services. 20% was website, WordPress websites. Is that correct? Y yes. 80% was like a large custom uh, sites bill. We were lucky to get okay. this project from Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. We got a project from mm -hmm. Starbucks. So, I mean, I'm not saying we were doing, we were doing bad. It was just, I wasn't happy with the, how those projects were coming and going. You know, we would lend something big, but then we may not lend anything big for another six months. So again, no predictability into it. And that's why we were on the side. You know how, like, I have seen lots of agency make that mistake that we made it back then is you try to do these things on the sides. You're never like ready to fully commit to it 100%. And we, we were one of those people where we didn't commit it to 100%. So on the side, we were, you know, trying to niche down. During that year transition, I want to kind of dig into that for a second where you went from one agency client to a handful. You said you it was through word of mouth. What did that look like? like how did you promote word of mouth? How did, was there any, was it just happenstance that they referred you or what, could you talk, talk more about that growth period? So I, I should be clear. I should, uh, really word of mouth is just me being present on uh, different places where agencies were. Uh, so okay. it, there's a coaching program where there's all the agencies go there while I was also there. You know, brand from uh, You Gurus. Uh, sure. That 2016, 17, 17 is when I joined You Gurus. So I was hanging out with a lot of agencies. That mm -hmm. and I think there was another group in, in Facebook groups just hanging out with where the agency audience were, right? And then just making those natural connections there and getting business from that perspective. So it wasn't like word of mouth as a referral type of word of mouth, uh, more just like me being in the places where the agencies were hanging out. I've heard those places called like watering holes where the agency owners go to kind of connect and network. And so you started to participate and join those communities, it sounds like. Yeah. And I, yeah. I to be honest, joined the, those places before we selected agencies as the niche. I joined there mm. to, to go there to learn myself about things, right? And then I discovered, well, this could be a niche. And then I saw the others to it. But I, I can be here to actually learn. And then whatever the networking happens, that also helps with the business, right? Uh, another yeah. reason why we then, you know, decided to, to niche down in there. Because the more and more time you spend with that, the more we were understanding that market better than anyone else. And we were ourselves for agencies, right? So understanding those pain points very clearly. You know, when they say, all oh, my content is delayed from the client, we exactly know what that means because, you know, we have mm -hmm. been uh, on the sides just waiting for the content from client for forever, right? So that in that their pain points, the, those exact pain points that those were our pain points just a year before that, right? Uh, so, so that really uh, helped to relate with them. And then when you propose them a solution, right, it's just that there's that trust and they understand that you understand them, right? And, mm. and that really helped us to go from that one to 10 plus agency initially. 
Would you say that your background as an agency helped you to grow the the business faster within the agency market than if you were not a, a traditional agency? Definitely, yes, I would say yeah. that. Hey, it's Corey. Almost every day, I talk with agency owners who are frustrated with getting their outbound program off the ground. The truth is, too many agencies are too dependent on inbounds and referrals to grow their business. We all know that it's getting harder and harder to generate inbounds and that it's just not a sustainable way to grow your business. I'd like to give you the six secrets for driving consistent ROI from your outbound that I learned as Scorpion's chief marketing officer, where we doubled the business from 20 million to 40 million just by adding outbound to an existing inbound only program. It's a free six day email course that will transform your outbound from broken to consistently driving new sales opportunities. You could sign up and get the first secret right now by going to get outboundroi.com that's get outboundroi.com now back to the show so you were doing the agency services for agencies mostly web development sounds like and at what point did you productize on wordpress and what was that journey like yes so again we're still in 2018 right and all of this is going you're trying to niche now and it's working not working i don't know what's happening you know still not satisfied with uh you know that what you hear to people that if you niche down this could happen that could happen i wasn't seeing any of that <laughs> right and i mean i didn't know that i was doing it all wrong but still i didn't know that not really getting those shiny benefits that people talk about so i stumble <laughs> upon this facebook group uh, it's called productized services. And I stumbled upon that group and the person who ran that group, Robin, he had this ebook and it was, it was a pretty interesting thing. He did this where he had a shared Google drive and he did, I'm going to build this ebook in 24 hours and live. So, you know, you, you are on that Google drive and you're seeing him build that ebook. People are commenting on the side. It, it was just fun experience to j just see that. And I was following that and, you know, I was seeing how he was building that. And it was, those, those were the early days where productized services were just uh, coming along. And I, I saw him, I saw that ebook and I saw the things that he was mentioning. And then, you know, I went like, what if, if we were to do this, right? Because we understand the agency market. Uh, we looked around and nobody was doing it in the WordPress space. So that was kind of scary. Mm. Like, why is nobody doing it? But then we, we thought about what if we do this, right? And it wasn't a long time from that realization to the moment, I think probably within a month from that point, uh, we had rebranded into Unlimited WP. We closed down the previous, in a way, you could say we closed down the previous agency. And yeah, we were Unlimited WP. That, that, that was a very quick change. That sounds like a bold, quick change. Why, why were you so convinced that that was the right path? I, I was convinced that we had to do something drastic. Because we can't just keep doing that forever. Because at that point, I was already doing that for probably about five years or so. And, you know, when you don't make profits for five years, you live on your wife's salary. You know, there, there's a point where, like, you're about to throw in the towel, right? Like, okay, I'm done. I had said to my team, it, it, you know, during those times that, guys, if this doesn't go through, like, we're done. So that was, like, our last uh, attempt that, okay, you know, we will do this. And if this works out, great. If this not, I'll do something else with my life. Like, because, you know, I've already given five years to it. And if we can't make it now, probably it wasn't meant to be. Or like, I, I need to learn more about this business and, and how to survive in it. So, you know, it, I think it was just that situation, no profits mm -hmm. and just a lot of hustle. It was that last attempt that, okay, let's go all in. I don't think there was any other motivation outside of that. I didn't see here anywhere. It was just that intuition from inside. Uh, that, you yeah. know, this should work and let's go all in. How would you define a productized service? Let's say as the name suggests, uh, it is a service, but it should feel like a product. Like, you know, when you buy a product, you typically know the pricing, right? It's not like usually with the service, you don't know the pricing. It depends on, you know, what, but the product, you, you know the price, right? You know the features that are of a product before you buy it. Mm -hmm. Just like that, like th that's my definition of it is like, uh, whatever service you have, it should be packaged, marketed, and delivered like a product, right? And then that's a productized service. So in our case, for example, we package it like this is a WordPress white label service with our base plan. You get two hours every day and you pay 500 bucks a month for that, right? So you know that what you're just like a product, you know how much you're paying and you know exactly how much and what in return you are getting. There is no surprises there's no other price so very very fixed pricing transparent prices you can say and like a product 
if you buy, you know, iPhone and you go home and you open that box and it will be iPhone in there, right? Like not something else that like you know what you're getting. <laughs> yeah. Just like that yeah. as an agency. Then if they come to us and they say, hey, can you help me with this Shopify task? Well, no, sorry, we can't, right? Like back in the agency days, we would have because our team members, the developers, they may know Shopify from their previous job experiences, right? So we may know yeah. how to do it, but we'll still tell them, no, that's something we can't do. So basically what I'm trying to say is a fixed scope that, you know, you need to have a fixed scope, just like if a product has a features, then your service has a feature through and you can't go outside of that, right? And that's what I call it a productized service. That's super clear. And so it sounds like you went pretty dramatically over to that sort of end of the spectrum where it was, you were doing custom services all the way to the other end of the spectrum, doing productized services. At that point, did you just churn away custom projects or was it kind of more of an evolution where as you were building up the productized service part of the business that you would do less of the custom work or how did that work? We partnered up with a couple other agencies and we started referring clients and other business to them. And we had that affiliate relationship with them. It was, you know, so th that, yes, it, it was that. We kept about seven clients that were like clients that would not go away. I mean, you know, th those weren't clients anymore at that point. They were friends and yeah. they just loved working with us. So we kept about seven and everybody else, any new business. Uh, we shut down the website. So there was no old website. It, it redirected to Unlimited WP. So there was no old business. Just those seven clients. And and because mm. we didn't want it to get rid of that team that we had uh, that were serving those clients. And that those were not a WordPress. Those were more enterprise type softwares that we had built. So now, you know, uh, those clients were really, I mean, the reasons they had given us those big projects and we built this big uh, software is their businesses run on it. So, you know, we kept that. And to date, we still have that unit. Uh, we still have same number of people we had in 2018. So those are some seven guys we have serving those used to be a seven clients over the years. Two are left now. So, you know, others mm -hmm. we have told them we don't do this anymore and slowly one by one are leaving. And there are two that would just not uh, leave us. I, I mean, those are awesome clients. We don't want to leave them either. Sure, of course. Why would you not continue to work with them in that case? In the early days when you were building out these productized service, the, the two hours of WordPress per day, or whatever it was at that time, how did you get the pricing and the packaging right? Like, how did you figure that out? Was it experimentation? Did you get it right the first time? Or how did you approach the right productized service? We did got it right for the first time, but I don't want to say we were expert or anything. Maybe we were just lucky. To date, we have same, same packages, same price. It, we have not changed same. the pricing since same one. Uh, it's <laughs> you been, got it right. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it's been a little over three years. Same price, same package, same deals. Nothing has been changed on that. So yeah. I think I want to say we were lucky because you. you ca yeah. it, I don't think that usually happens, right? You just put it, it, it just clicked. It just clicked with the market. Even before launching that, it wasn't that we were first time we will be working with agencies. Right? At that point, we were already working with agencies. We were charging them and we knew how, you know, what, what price point they would be happy with it that works for our marketing team where they can generate leads, where we are not overcharging, undercharging, those sort of things. Because we also have to be conscious that our team is in India. So people have that mindset, well, oh, that, that's got to be cheap, right? Uh, so it's not uh, that the pricing should correlate to those factors too. So in that case, it's just worked out for us. Now, how did we package those is the sort of the core of the product ties was reoccurring revenue, right? That's why we were doing that. And mm. if it we wanted reoccurring revenue, one thing was clear, we can't do anything one time. And you wouldn't believe how many people we turn away every day because they have one time need. Like there's this agencies, they're ideal client, but they... Otherwise, they're covered. They don't need our help, but they just have this one-time project, right? And we're like, sorry, we don't do one-time. That's probably daily we tell somebody that, sorry, we can't work with you because we just don't do one-time. And we are so mm -hmm. tempted to do it, right? Like, oh, we are letting you go. Marketing guys are like, can we just take them? Because, you know, we are working so hard in getting these leads <laughs> to the business and you're just turning them away. And that you have done that since the day one is like, no, minimum criteria to work with us is your agency should be at a point where you at least have two hours of help that you need, right? So you at least should have 10, 20 clients. And if you have 20 websites, then, you know, there's going to be enough work every day, uh, at least two mm -hmm. hours. Right? That's a minimum criteria. And the reason to do that is if you don't do that, then we would have agents high churn rate, right? They would come on right. the service, 
I don't use it. They leave. They come on. They leave. We, we don't want that. Right. So, uh, so we, we package it in a way where it's a minimum two hours, and then it's two hours, four hours, eight hours. There's no upper limit. Uh, but yeah, th th that's how we basically packaged it in the increment of two hours. How do you market your services, your productized services to agencies today? How do you grow the business? Google ads, Facebook ads, uh, lead magnets. You know, with the same mm -hmm. things that I was mentioning we were trying in 2018. It's just that <laughs> back then they didn't work and now it works because when people see us, it's a product, right? So they see the price, they, see, they know what they're getting. And all we have on the website is book a demo call and people book those demo calls. And then, you mm -hmm. know, we get on a call and we show them how the service works. And it's not just that the, the packaging, as I say, like the marketing wise, it's productized, but then internally how we deliver it, that's also very productized too. There's a system where they get on, they create tasks for us and we have a very systematic way of how those tasks, tasks get assigned to the devs, how we work them, how we deliver them, right? And we show them actually like how the, and they usually 90% of the time, the agency is blown away. And one of the reasons they're blown away is they're like, oh, I want to do something like this too with my business. Because uh, they business. are like 2018 yes. version of me. Uh, so they're, oh, <laughs> this is cool. I, you know, I want to do something. And, and, and yeah. that, that, that works for us. Do you do any kind of outbound sales and marketing or is it mostly uh, digital marketing lead magnets? We are trying some outbound right now. And mm -hmm. like right now, right now. Uh, yeah. Even we just started do, using this AI tool, which yeah. got us a few leads in last week. We, we just started using it since last Monday. So, so far it, it's, it's not working. So, I mean, it's maybe it's early uh, days, but so far it, th that is not working uh, for us because the agencies, that audience, they get reached out by so many people selling yeah. them so many things, right? Uh, th yeah. That's why it's kind of tough audience and they're the one who helped their client do outbounds and things like that too, right? So it's, it's, they're detected. It's hard to get past that. And are you still spending time in online forums and communities where agency owners hang out? Is that still a thing you do? Yes, but probably not as much as what we used to do before because we then, you know, when the ads were working out, because, you know, we're selling product as well, service, but a product as service. So uh, just that, you know, when the ads work, you kind of get lazy. I'll admit that, yeah. you know, oh, this is straightforward. Let's just spend money on the ads and then you're getting this business. But now we are at a point where, you know, right now, if you were to ask me, yes, then we are reevaluating how we are doing marketing. And if you were to scale things from this point on to something you did at the yourself, you did at the Scorpion, right? Like uh, that mm -hmm. kind of growth we want to go through. Then we are reevaluating everything we do in the marketing. Yes. Sure. Well, you mentioned something earlier on, which is lifestyle. And part of the desire, what I heard you say is part of the desire for starting this business was to have the lifestyle that you want. And growth for growth's sake doesn't always necessarily support a balanced lifestyle. I'm using the word balanced, but it is, you could get overly indexed on growth and I've seen that happen. It yeah, just depends uh, on what you want. He, yes, and, and you shouldn't lose a sight to that, right? Like uh, you shouldn't forget like that's what you wanted. And in a way, that's what I'm satisfied with where we are right now. It's because sure. I, uh, personally speaking, personal lifestyle, I, I have what I exactly wanted, yes. Yeah, that's beautiful. So what would you say to an agency owner that is the 2018 Ronick who is not living the lifestyle that they want yet and they're passionate about making that happen? They're thinking about exploring this idea of not only verticalizing, but also focusing, doing productized services. What advice would you have for them? Two words, try it. Just go ahead and try it. It works. I think there's right now we're in a really good just market situation where the productized services are getting popular day by day. And mm -hmm. if you want to give it a shot, it's it's amazing. That it's not like there are no cons of going productized. There definitely are. But if you are, you know, study them and if you're okay with those, then definitely this is a good time to try it. Even if not productized, at least going, you know, vertically being focused, you're just going to thank yourself like I'm thinking now in the future that, you know, you're, that would help you to get what you were talking about, the balance, right? Otherwise, you're just putting too much energy into just make, you know, survive in that generic world. And, you know, I, I know everybody thinks that, oh, well, it's just this year or it's just next year and then I'm going to make it and then I'm going to make it, right? Uh, mm -hmm. but, but that, I mean, for, for most people, that never ends, right? And that's what we have seen, right? There are so many podcasts, there are so many uh, these conferences, you can go and talk to people and, and you'd see that. So I would say just accept that fact, right? Like you don't have to fight that. 
I just accepted that by going vertical or buying productizing, you're making it easier on yourself. What would be a small step that they could take in that direction? What's the first step that they should do? Just find a niche, right? Like find a market, find a one market that you like to work with. What are, you mentioned that there's, it's not all roses as far as productizing your service. What would be some of the downsides or some of the challenges that come along with that? There's always FOMO of like fear mm -hmm. of that. Oh, I'm, I'm not, oh, we could be a lot bigger if we were to do Shopify or if we were to be a lot bigger if we also offer design, right? Like there's always that fear that we could have been bigger if we did that. that that's just, I mean, it, it's a small one, but you do always, not from me personally, but I hear that from the team a lot too. Like, hey, why can't we do this too? Why can't I? And I'm like, how do I explain you that? No, we can't, we shouldn't, right? And they, and I tell them, well, we'll do that when we cross, we have 100 people, right? Then we can, we have enough manpower to do it. And now that we are at 100, they ask me and I tell them, well, we'll do it when we reach to 200, right? So, but the fact is, I don't really want to do it. I'm impressed. Yeah, your, your level of discipline of sticking to saying no to all the wrong things and saying yes to only the right things. Like, that's really commendable. Time yes, here. because <laughs> the, the, the WordPress is so big, it powers like 40% of the internet websites, mm. right? And the... Yeah, thousands of agencies. So what we have, that's like nothing. We could just grow it so much into where we are. So we don't really need to offer anything else. We could just keep getting better at what we are doing. So th that's one thing. Second is with the productizing, in a way, it is a commodity, right? Like there's a lot of coaches out there. They talk about value pricing. Here, there is, you're not really value pricing. The work we deliver to agency, sometimes, you know, those are Fortune 500 clients that those agencies have and they have us do something that let's say we charge them 300 bucks for it, that we could have charged them 20 grand for it, right? Like it was that important for, so, but there's no, we only get 300 for that. So the, the, you don't get that value pricing. You're more in the commodity. I would say that that's one of the big uh, disadvantage. And that's something, what I said earlier, that learn about the cons and you should be all right with it. So I'll say those two big things like fear of that you would have to always resist yourself and say, keep saying no. And second is you're into that commodity type of pricing, right? So you have to understand that market more and, and work accordingly. What is your vision for Unlimited WP? What's the future look like? We want to help 3,000 agencies by 2027 mm. and we want to stay productized, but there's a point at, at which we want to stop and rather just adding more agencies, like actually investing more time into, uh, you know, because I hear this, a lot of people have this awesome tagline, right? Oh, we want to help, for example, us, we want to help agencies grow profit, save time and scale there, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, that's a nice tagline and everything, but ultimately we're just selling them WordPress, right? Uh, and we feel like we do do that, right? And we genuinely want to spend more time in making mm -hmm. sure that they are becoming more profit because I, you know, as I was saying, like, I'm happy with where I'm right now and those agencies that I'm helping, I can see my past self there. Not all of them. There are all others that are extremely successful even beyond where we are right now, but th th they are small and we want to find more ways to help them just grow. So that's a market because that's a people that I really connect with those agency owners. So yeah. just keep helping that audience. And what is your personal motivation? It's the people. It's the people. Mm -hmm. It didn't start it out that way, but from the last two years or so, you know, before the motivation was just like money or business or success. And now it has become just like people. Just that I'm not an extrovert person, but I do feed off people's energy. Just seeing people happy, excited, just working together to make something. I think that, that that's that's been my motivation lately. That's awesome. Ronick, where can people reach out to connect with you? Yeah, you can check us out at unlimitedwp.com or find me on LinkedIn, R-O-N-I-K, Patel, P-A-T-E-L. Yes, uh, do reach out. On the site, we put a lot of material for just agencies and stuff. We're about to put this guide uh, on e-commerce, how to, you know, improve your e-commerce, like no BS guide, not, not uh -huh. the stuff that we will just talk about, like really, really thought out guide on how you can improve performance of your e-commerce websites if you have a clients in that space. So Unlimited WP is the best place. Got it. And that's where that ebook will be? Yes. Okay, beautiful. That's super valuable. Thank you so much for joining, Ronick. Thank you, Corey, for having me. All right, folks, that's it for today. I'm Corey Quinn, and I hope you join me again next time for the Vertical Go-To-Market Podcast. If you receive value from the show, I would love a five-star rating and review on Apple Podcasts. Thanks, and we'll see you soon.